The man I see just before sleep. A minute before I fall asleep, I have noticed that my thoughts go irrational. I'd grown to welcome that irrationality, as it almost always is the harbinger of a good night's sleep. How am I going to pay that bill, I would think in one moment. And in the next, I decided to invest in luxury yachts. I could see those yachts, despite never having been near one in real life. Then my thoughts before falling asleep started to center on the man. The man in my kitchen. In one moment I would be thinking about my money situation. And in the next, I knew his penetrating eyes were able to see through the wall and into the bedroom where I was just falling asleep. I learned that irrational thoughts like these are called hypnagogic imagery. I was living alone at this time, so the man I saw before falling asleep was just hypnagogic and not real, or so I thought. After a few weeks of the man figuring intensely before sleep, I had grown increasingly nervous about bed, and just like that, I had developed a bad case of insomnia. Instead of sleeping, I started taking nightly walks. One night, as I was walking back home, a figure passed me by. I was quickly convinced it was the hypnagogic man. Maybe it was my lack of sleep, but I uncharacteristically decided to follow him and find out his destination. We walked for 20 minutes. I left the part of the city I knew and entered one that I didn't recognize. At this point, I started to notice how irrational my thoughts were getting, as if I was about to fall asleep. I saw a building in front of which the man had stopped and immediately thought, that's where I live, despite never having seen the house before. Certainties popped up in my head, though. I'd never had them before. I suddenly knew that a terrible man who dealt in expensive yachts had recently moved into the building, and that in a way that made eminent sense in the moment, we had become entangled in the dream world. I knew that he had my thoughts before sleeping, just as I had his. He didn't know how to pay his bills or fight his loneliness. And he welcomed those thoughts because he knew they would bring him sleep. In a sense, I was the one bringing him to the dreamland. I felt frightened when I understood that he had been in my apartment on several occasions, just as he had with other young men before killing them. In fact, I realized, still in that lull of almost sleeping, I was his first murder victim. He had recently started to visit my now a derelict apartment to get high on the memory of the first kill. With my murderer turning to smile at me, I now knew I would always be his and never more my own, and so I felt myself drifting off to sleep. 